Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to um, this year's Science Industry Day 2017. Um, it, it is a joint activity of IST Austria and the Federation of Austrian Industries. And the motto of this year's Science Industry Day is create, connect, translate. We will have a close look or we'll take a close look uh, of what it takes, what are the ingredients to build up a lively and prosperous ecosystem for innovation. And I'm looking forward to a very fruitful and, and interesting discussion uh, this evening with a, a selection of, of high-ranking panelists. And I'm very confident that we'll have a, lo a lot of takeaway messages. My name is Stefan Bernhard and I'll guide you through this evening and try to keep in time. So the beginning, as you see, was a complete failure. We're 10 minutes behind. So my apologies for that. Um, this year is a very special year for us because we have, for the first time, tried to combine uh, an afternoon which was dedicated to young scientists and founders, that was the afternoon session, with the science industry talk in the evening. Uh, and it is a unique opportunity for us because the afternoon was almost entirely organized by PhD students, by postdocs and alumni of IST Austria. And now we connect to uh, the kind of more conventional format of a uh, panel discussion. Create, connect and translate is the topic of today. But before we get uh, set off and start, I'd like to ask our president, Tom, for his words of welcome. The floor is yours. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Science Industry Talk 2017, Create, Connect, Translate. I welcome especially Ulrich Schuh, the Director General for Economic Policy, Innovation and Technology from the Austrian Federal Ministry of Science, Research and Economy. Welcome. And Christoph Neumeyer, the Director General of the Federation of Austrian Industries. Let me collectively uh, welcome all the representatives that are here of political parties of the civil service of the Republic of Austria and, and uh, especially also of uh, the province of Lower Austria all members of our boards and advisory uh, bodies, all representatives of universities, research institutions, and funding agencies, in particular also all of our supporters. Uh, here, now I, I want to mention somebody in addition by name, the um, um, uh, president of uh, previous president of the Austrian Federation of Industries, who is one of our biggest supporters, Veit Sorga. So. And also other more recent supporters, and most notably, uh, especially for uh, today, uh, Lansdowne Partners. So uh, we will have uh, our annual science industry panel uh, talk here that is, as every year, jointly organized with the Federation of Austrian Industries. And I'm looking forward to, again, in, as every year, to an interesting, stimulating discussion. This is also a very special event because there's another first here today for IST Austria. Uh, we, we are now almost exactly eight years old since, since the opening uh, in this very lecture hall happened uh, of the Institute. And uh, so we have had many firsts in these eight years and today is another first. We'll actually launch uh, an, an advanced technology incubator fund uh, called IST Cube. Uh, and uh, if I may, I will take a few words be, to, to explain this because there may be questions, why is it the business of a basic science research institution uh, to start and uh, what is essentially a venture fund? Um, and it is indeed true that the core missions of this institution are twofold and have been from the very beginning is number one, do basic science at a world-class level, attract the best scientists to compete uh, with uh, the best scientists all over the world. And secondly, uh, to educate the next generation of scientists, especially through our graduate school. Um, and uh, 
nonetheless, it is very clear, and, and, and we have always had this, this conviction from the, from the very beginning of, 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 of uh, this institution, and that goes back to the very first development plan authored by, by Haim Harari, that whenever you bring together uh, a group of extremely bright people, some of the best scientists in the world, some exciting things will happen, and some of these exciting things will be of enormous benefit for society and also great, create great value for industry. Uh, and it is not only op our op an opportunity here, but indeed our obligation to make sure we, we follow, we nurture, we uh, support, and uh, we help create such value. And so from the very beginning, we, a, part, a very integral part of this institution has been to follow a, a three-pronged strategy here for technology transfer. And, uh, and today we'll actually will, will launch the third part of this strategy. And so uh, just to, in a very few words, these three parts are what I would call ISDIP, ISD Park, and I, now ISD Cube. What is ISDIP? ISDIP is our technology transfer office that follows all the developments on campus and tries to create value whenever there are possibilities, be it through patenting research results, through licensing our research results to companies, through uh, supporting startup ideas that come out of, camp, uh, out of our research on campus, spin-offs. Uh, this is one, ISDIP. The second one, is RSD Park. This is the technology park we are planning, which has, uh, construction has already started across the road, as, 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 as uh, uh, many of you probably know. And this is to create the opportunity for companies who want to be close, for whatever reason, close to ISD Austria, to be able to be close to ISD Austria. And there can be many different reasons for a company uh, to uh, want to be close, and we have already have several examples of actually companies that we temporarily have on campus. Some of them actually will be represented on the panel, uh, and that could be for reasons of that they want to share our infrastructure, for reasons that they want to actually have access or priority access to our graduates, because we'll produce pro per year we'll produce you know 100 PhD students and this, a similar number of postdocs. Uh, in the not too far future. Uh, and uh, simply other companies may simply be interested to be close to the science that goes on here and, and, and the scientific atmosphere that, that is represented by this campus. Uh, that is uh, prong two, IST Park. And now prong three, IST Cube. This is really, uh, we have uh, to create also as part of this ecosystem for innovation here an entrepreneurial spirit. If you have bright people, there won't be only ideas for, 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 for great research papers, there will also be ideas for great new companies and startups. Uh, and uh, one of the, it's well known, one of the biggest weaknesses of structurally in Austria is actually the financial support of such ideas and startups. And uh, that's where we actually see our opportunity and our obligation to also step in here with, with the support, of course, uh, of generous in, uh, the support of investors here to start uh, this incubator fund. And since this is of, often confused, let me just stress again, these are actually three independent things with the same overall goal to create value here. Uh, out of science. Uh, and uh, they are independent because ISD Cube may fund ideas that come from campus or, or do not come from campus. Ideas that may be next door in, at the park or may not be next door at the park. ISD Park will have companies that come out of ISD uh, or do not come out, out of ISD that are funded by ISD Cube or are not funded by ISD Cube. And ISD IP will Will, will pursue the most sensible strategy for whatever uh, research can be translated here, here towards industry and whether this is through funding by ISD Cube and through uh, starting uh, uh, next door in ISD Park or whether this is through licensing to a company, a pharma company in Basel or through starting uh, an enterprise in Silicon Valley. This uh, ISDIP will simply produce, uh, uh, pursue the, 
the most promising strategy. But together with this whole package of these three prongs, we hope to really hear uh, with, a bit, with, with the necessary patience as we all need in basic research to really be successful also in this technology transfer enterprise. And now let me stop here and actually hand over to... Uh, Mr. Dama. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you so much for your opening words. Now I'd like to ask Christoph Neumeyer, Director General of the Federation of Austrian Industries, for his words of welcome since this is a joint event. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for your words. Hey, Mr. President, um, Mr. Schuh, Mr. Sorge, Mr. Schneider, it's a pleasure to be here. Very well welcome from my side, dear students. It gives me great pleasure to open this annual event which underlines the importance of the interaction between academia and business. We are delighted that so many of you have accepted our invitation to discuss new developments and essential topics pre pertaining to research and, and innovation. Your broad participation demonstrates the growth of the ISD Austria community. This emphasizes your scientific success and the essential role you play in fostering Austria's innovation ecosystem and in enhancing its international visibility and reputation. And what is happening here is indeed impressive. In 2016, the ISD Austria employed around 600 people from more than 50 different countries on campus and has raised more than 100 million euros in third party funding. I would like to emphasize that a considerable volume of external research funds are awarded to ISD Austria through ESC grants from Horizon 2020. These funds are highly competitive and are a real sign of quality and are something you can be proud of. All this was successfully accomplished over a time span of just 10 years. As you all know, the Federation of Austrian Industries has actively supported the founding process of ISD Austria and therefore has followed it very closely ever since. Powerful interaction and a strong link between basic research and applied research are of paramount importance for research and development and for innovation. For that, we need excellent players that build strategic partnerships. In Austria, the ISD is one of the main players in basic research. In applied research, we are rightly proud of our research intensive and innovative companies, which together account for almost two thirds of total R&D investment in Austria, which has risen by about 25% during the last five years. The close cooperation between science and industry is exemplary here on campus as shown at least of all by the setting up of the new technology park for research-driven enterprises. Tonight's annual event is a good opportunity to demonstrate what can be achieved by strengthening bridges along the entire innovation chain and creating a functioning eco ecosystem for innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's topic is Create, Connect, Translate. And it describes some of the requirements that are essential if we are to succeed in creating new ideas, progressing and accelerating them through research and development and ultimately making them available to society. What means create? Well, progressive changes require a resilient and adaptable system, which in turn needs curiosity, open-mindedness, courage and confidence. These qualities, along with the right qualifications and skills, such as creativity and interdisciplinary thinking and problem-solving abilities, are the breeding ground for new ideas. As a highly industrialized country at the technological frontier, we are challenged to constantly come up with innovations. Connect. Only by understanding R&D and innovation as a network consisting of valuable elements and linkages it is possible to create and strengthen an ecosystem that, that is conduct, conducive to innovation. Each link in the innovation chain plays an important role and therefore needs to be promoted because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. The third key word this evening is translate. Good ideas and excellent research results unfold their value only 
if made available to society, either in the form of smart products and services or through business model innovations, dissemination, resource efficient processes, and so forth, in a rapidly changing environment. It is important to translate results of research even more quickly. For that, we need innovative talents. We need you, dear students. We are pleased to see that today's young scientists and founders afternoon were set up to foster interaction and a sharing of experiences between students, fellows, managers, and professors. With the mentioned ISD Cube, ISD Austria is going to step further to actively support young innovators and the establishment of spin-offs, and thus the innovative companies of the future. I'm convinced that this initiative has come at the right time, and I very much look forward to learning more about it during the presentation and to the panel discussion that will follow. Ladies and gentlemen, let us strengthen the bridge to a successful future. Let us create, connect, translate. Thank you, Ms. Neumeyer. Now it's my pleasure to ask Ulrich Schuh, um, Director General for Economic Policy, Innovation and Technology at the Federal Ministry for Science, Research and Economy, for his words of welcome. Dr. Schuh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, dear Mr. President, uh, dear Director General, distinguished guests, it is an honor and a pleasure for me to address you today on behalf of the Austrian Federal Ministry of Science, Research and Economy. It's the ministry that is responsible for providing the necessary framework conditions for IST Austria to play a key role as an institution of excellence in frontier research. By ensuring long-term funding, we have set the necessary preconditions for a fruitful, sustainable development of the Institute. It has been impressive to see a high-risk idea turn into a success story so quickly. IST Austria has grown and gained momentum year by year, and we can already look back at a period of successful development, which has, was made possible by the following components. A strong political commitment, a clear mission and strategy, a determined leadership, a rigorous implementation, flexibility and pragmatism, and openness to adaption and readjustment. Undoubtedly, IST Austria is a key institution to foster excellence in basic research in Austria. As you know very well, the two main objectives of the Institute are to perform First, world-class research in science, and second, to train the coming generations of leading scientists and researchers. What we want to achieve is to connect this excellence in research with an entrepreneurial spirit. For our ministry, fostering and encouraging the cooperation between science and economy are at the very heart of our efforts. Through new initiatives, we try to offer the best possible framework conditions for a fruitful interaction. In this respect, I would like to mention some of our recent initiatives. The establishment of a regional knowledge transfer centers, the launch of a national open innovation strategy, or the start-up package. It was only three weeks ago that Minister Mara launched the spin-off Austria initiative, which will give further impetus to the transfer of research results into concrete startups and business ideas. ISD Austria shows that frontier research makes a strong and significant contribution to innovation and the development of our society. Given that the results of the most recent evaluation of ISD Austria as a research institution have been endorsed by all parties in Parliament one year ago, we can be confident that the political commitment will remain high also in the future. What we assume, and not only assume, but we are sure about, is that young people 
former ISD Austria PhD students or postdocs will pursue their careers elsewhere, either in academia or in other parts of society, in Austria or in and beyond Europe. ISD Austria alumni will work in industry research and development as entrepreneurs in startups and spin-offs in the public sector and in other parts of knowledge-driven societies. ISD Austria has already developed an impressive portfolio of activities to foster an entrepreneurial spirit on campus. There has been a technology transfer office established. Uh, the Twist Fellowship program has been launched. In cooperation with the business agency of Lower Austria, a technology park next to campus of ISD Austria has been created, and first, patent files, uh, first patents have been filed. And last but not least, as already mentioned uh, before, the institute was able to attract the first deep technology seed fund in Austria based on private financial commitment, ISD Cube. We are very happy to see that the institute is widening the scope of its activities year by year, and we are committed to work together to preserve the best possible framework conditions for the further development of IST Austria. Now, we will learn more about which new initiatives of the IST Austria ecosystem for innovation are currently launched and how curiosity-driven research will connect to the entrepreneurial spirit we already see here on the campus. Congratulations, all the best for the uh, continuation of the event and best wishes. Thank you very much. Mr. Xu, thank you very much. The perfect bridge for my new moderation text, uh, because now we are about uh, to get into um, the ISD Cube story. Uh, ISD Austria has built up some reputation of developing novel formats in science, in science management, and now we're about to talk about the newest accomplishment. To this end, I would like to ask our head of technology transfer, Markus Wanko, to join me and to take over. I'll get back anyway, but to take over now. And Markus, you have, I think, another story to tell. Please. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. Thanks very much for coming again for many of you. Um, as has been said before, the science industry talk has some kind of a tradition already. I think we're doing it for the eighth year. Um, the first couple of years, we were talking about undoubtedly interesting things, um, like how to attract and retain talent, how to develop ecosystems. But essentially, we were always talking about other people and other places. What we did, and that's also obvious because the institute was um, still very young and still in development. Last year, for the first time, we actually showcased what's happening here, and we were really happy that we could be in a position to do that. We had companies here, and Tom has mentioned that before, who have decided to move and set up camp here at IST. We showcased researchers from IST uh, who are working on patentable inventions, and we actually showed also and had here the first couple of graduates from IST who are pursuing industry careers. Um, and I think we were very happy to see that all these different prongs um, are developing. Since then, we haven't been sleeping, and we have done something new, um, as was mentioned before, something that is a new way to bring together the competences that we think we do have uh, in transferring scientific results to economic uh, possibilities. Um, competences in know-how, our infrastructure, um, and also external capital um, to make science and tech-based uh, startups really thrive. Um, one of the things they obviously know uh, and need, sorry, no less <laughs> than they need, is, is financing and capital which is why this is an initiative that we haven't done alone, but we have partnered with uh, a very large investment uh, firm uh, that I will introduce then, then later and set up ISD Cube. Um, as was mentioned before, ISD Cube is a, is a new seed fund and an incubator, and I'm happy to introduce this tonight, but I will not do that alone, and I'm lucky not to have to do that alone. I will do it together with my new colleague, um, and fellow director of, of ISD Cube, Rupesh Chatwani. <laughs> Rupesh is a, 
uh, is a venture capital investor from London. He has been working 20 years in the venture capital industry. Um, and uh, we are very happy to have him. And I think one way of, of, of introducing Cube to you is that we will, I think, just set out the parameters of what it is that we are doing. Um, and then later on, we will have some founders that are the actual real target group of uh, what it is that we are doing and, uh, and uh, continue the discussion. Um, first, let me just ask you something. Um, what did you make take up this job? And I know that we have had this uh, discussion before in a slightly more intimate setting than this one. <laughs> but what made you do it? Well, well one word, uh, Brexit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, so yeah, dis despite my Indian name, my horrible American accent and living in London, um, I actually grew up in Austria and I'm actually Austrian. Um, and I left, uh, I left Vienna 30 years ago uh, and moved to Boston, then I lived in Silicon Valley and then I moved to London. And all the time I always you know, kept coming back, kept in contact with Austria. And it was very frustrating for me that we never developed a real sort of technology, entrepreneurship, ecosystem in Austria the way uh, many other smaller countries in Europe, for example, have, have done. And so when we, we sort of connected beginning of this year and you told me the story of, of IST and, and the team you had built on the tax transfer, transfer side and the conversations you were having with Lansdowne about, you know, could we do this in Austria? I just couldn't say no. I mean, there was, there was no way I couldn't be part of this to make something happen in my home country and bring all that experience that I'd gathered all over the world to hopefully make uh, Austria the next sort of Silicon Valley. And we're happy to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> I should also say, it, what we are doing is something novel in, in Austria, and uh, at least to the extent that I'm aware, there is no similar initiative of bringing together a public research, basic research um, institution and private investors. Internationally, this is not, this is not particularly new, right? Um, I think in... Um, Obviously, if we look at the United States, the situation is a bit different, but even if you look within Europe, um, the UK has a quite long-standing tradition of uh, uh, similar initiatives. Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial College started initiatives like this 20 years ago. Um, if you look at continental Europe, there are other examples, TU Munich, um, uh, uh, KU Leuven. So it's, it's not something that is you know, on a global scale new, obviously. Um, but I think it's, um, at least from my perspective, it's a, it's a good idea to bring this to Austria. So maybe as a next step, let's just look uh, really briefly, and we won't bore you with the, with the long slide presentation. Um, and, and let's look at what, what is it, ISD Cube. And maybe you want to take yeah, it. Yeah, so, so it's been mentioned a few times. Um, ISD Cube was set up in partnership between uh, ISD Austria and a, a very large, successful investment management partnership called Lansdowne Partners. I think all of you by now are hopefully familiar with IST Austria, this wonderful place that we're all uh, standing in right now, standing or sitting in. Lansdowne, uh, you might not be familiar with, it's probably uh, the oldest and one of the most successful uh, hedge funds in Europe. Um, and um, they're also very committed to helping um, bring technology entrepreneurship uh, to Austria. Uh, and we got together with them and, and sort of saw eye to eye and came together in this partnership, which is now called IST Cube. Um, what is it actually? I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of, as Marcus said, just going to touch on the sort of fringes of what we offer. But essentially, it's, it's some of the points that, uh, that uh, uh, Thomas had uh, mentioned earlier. We've got the infrastructure that we have access to, both in terms of the park as well as the IST. Uh, we've got uh, know-how in the team, which we'll introduce in just a second. And experience, uh, and we've got capital that we can invest in in any uh, young new startups or spin-outs that um, that we find interesting. Um, where are we focusing is always a question that people ask. I always say the earlier the better. So the sooner that people have ideas, the sooner that they feel that there's something that they're working on that can get mer commercialized or spin out, come talk to us because the sooner we can hear about it, the sooner we can help you to to succeed. If I get the next. And, uh, well, obviously what, what makes um, and, and breaks, I think, the success and the development of such a venture is obviously the people. I mean, this is what we, what we tell our companies, and this is also what's true for ourselves. And I think we are 
in the real, uh, really privileged situation that we um, managed to assemble, I think, a, a quite strong team. Um, we mentioned Rupesh before. I'm glad to have you also with your, your background. Um, I think over the last two years, we mentioned to assemble a, a, a strong technology transfer team, uh, both with um, Astrid uh, Wullert here and, and Alexander Fischl, both strong experience in, in biology and, and in computer science and, and informatics uh, startups. Um, and this is the, just the inception. Um, so I think, uh, obviously, as our um, activities grow over time, that the team will grow as well. And I think one of the real reasons why we are doing this is because we want to bring an institutional investor um, uh, to this country. So at this very early stage, and I think we will see it later when we talk with the founders, um, Austria doesn't have a scarcity of, of very early stage seed capital from business angels. Um, the, there is a, a, a great number around and many people that also have strong experience um, in, in that particular area. The view of an institutional investor who has the capacity really to follow on longer and stay with these investments for, for a time and also bring the capacity and infrastructure that an institute like ours can bring is obviously in an, an additional and different dimension. Why I think it's a, it, it is a good development. Um, but to start with, I think the key um, is, is the team we have here. And again, explicitly, thanks very much to Alex and Astrid who have done much of the heavy lifting. Where are you? Stand up. Yeah, over here. Over there. <laughs> So I think without further ado, I, I'd actually like to bring these people on stage that actually matter, um, which are the founders. But before I do that, let me just uh, first, and, and that's really something I mean very sincerely, um, thank the people who have made that possible. Um, and that is obviously our partners from, from Landstone Partners. Um, that is also our internal management of IST. It is not at all obvious uh, to make something like this possible. Um, and I think the fact that Tom, um, um, Georg, also our board of trustees um, have supported this initiative uh, throughout is something that I didn't take for granted at all and I'm very happy about it. So thank you. And now, let's turn to the people who matter. Uh, so please come forward. Uh, we have here three founders. Um, Markus Holzer, just come all three. Yeah. Uh, Markus um, is the founder of Context Flow. We have here Markus Aspelmeier, um, who is a professor at the University of Vienna and founder of uh, one of the startups that are actually located here. Um, and Baltasar Fischer, who is the founder of Xarion. Um, let me. So this is a perfect opportunity for you guys, right? You can ask us any questions in front of audience. So <laughs> we can't really lie. But. Um, but we thought it's a good idea to, to, to use that mechanism as an introduction, I think, for what we're doing. And from now on, it is completely unrehearsed. So it's exciting for us as well, <laughs> and you might share this excitement or not. Um, Markus, can I just briefly ask you, and just for, <laughs> we have three Markuses here, so it might get complicated. <laughs> Markus, can you just briefly introduce what context flow is, maybe? And I think your company is at that stage that is really in the focal point of what we are trying to do. Um, can you just explain maybe a little bit the history, and you know, the development, and how an initiative like this could actually fit in what you are planning? Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, a quick introduction about what context flow does. Um, so uh, we are basically doing machine learning on large medical image data. And there are about one billion computer tomography and magnetic resonance images stored in the hospital systems in Europe. And uh, we try, so there's a lot of knowledge and information encoded in the data. And with the recent developments of deep learning, uh, we are de developing methods that use the data uh, to train these methods and to help radiologists to make a faster and more accurate reporting in the future. So that's like the base concept of what context flow does. Um, what does it mean in practice? It's basically at this stage the first product that we're announcing is an image search engine for radiologists. Um, so we give them the option whenever they want to know more about a certain region in the image simply mark the image, uh, simply mark the region in the image they're interested in, and we immediately find cases that have the same 3D structure. We analyze the findings to these cases, give them statistics about these findings, 
and immediately point them to right reference literature and information they need to know in order to decide whether it's that finding or a differential diagnosis or a different one. That's basically the concept of what context flow does. And uh, what's also I found interesting about us is that uh, we have quite a long history, although we are only uh, a little bit more than one year old, uh, because we started uh, with this topic in 2010, and we were basically a research project that was done at the Medical University of Vienna, uh, and that was called Kreshmoy, and it lasted about uh, four years. And with this research project, we created the first proof of concept of making this large medical image data actually searchable. And at the end of this project, it was at the end of 2014, uh, I finished also my master's degree in medical computer science and I asked myself, okay, what, what do I want to do next? Uh, I didn't really want to do a PhD because I'm not really into uh, writing papers. Uh, uh, so I decided, okay, what, what is there else to do? So we had this cool prototype that was developed. We had very good feedback from the radiologists and I decided uh, to ask uh, the head of the institute uh, if he would support following this up and putting this into commercial use and actually bring it into practice. And uh, this was Georg Langs uh, back then, who is now also a co-founder. And naive as he was back then, he, he said, yeah, sure, go ahead, let's do that. Uh, and that was uh, a little bit more than two years ago. And uh, back then I decided to have a look at, okay, what, what are the options? to commercialize this. So I had no idea about business development, no idea about pitching, about uh, marketing and sales. Um, so there is luckily a good infrastructure in Austria in place that helps you at that first stage uh, in Vienna. The, the one that we connected to is the Innovation Incubation Center at the Technical University of Vienna, uh, where I got a first contact into the one-on-one -on, -one on business development and spin-offs. And uh, through that, we also got connected to INITS, who is another incubator from Vienna, uh, and got some grants from the great uh, early stage investment, uh, uh, early stage grant opportunities in Austria from AWS. And uh, we are now at a stage where we have developed the system, we have it ready to go into the market. We presented it at uh, Congress and uh, radiology conferences, and we're now at a stage where we need additional funding, so we need a private investor who helps us to get this product in the market and help us run in the next uh, 18 to 24 months um, to go to the next step to the market entrance. And that's basically the stage we are at, and that's also where it gets very interesting uh, in terms of what possible funding opportunities are here. And with Iced Cube, there's uh, one additional player now uh, on this investment market, I would say, in Austria. Uh, that provides very interesting uh, options for, for startups. I will stop here because I talked quite a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks very much. Um, I think that was definitely a helpful introduction. And le let me maybe also, also add and, and, and build on this. Um, this is not the only initiative um, in, in Austria that is uh, helping to incubate uh, companies, clearly. Um, and I think the reference you made to other initiatives is, uh, is something that is entirely welcome by us, all right? So I think if the ultimate outcome is that every university is doing something like this, um, I think from a broader perspective and also from ours, um, I think this is a plus, clearly. And I think one of the ways, and also some of the colleagues are here, um, I really want to send that message that um, I think this is something where we can really cooperate well, and um, I think we have the first examples where we are doing this already. No? Let me move to Markus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Markus just called in before saying he's at the airport and asked him whether it's Rome or Vienna, <laughs> because he just came in. <laughs> Uh, on a short notice, but uh, Markus is a, um, a professor at the University of Vienna. Uh, he is heading a, a quantum optics group there. Um, the company that he has started together with uh, with colleagues is a very interesting example, I think, um, of how basic research and the bringing together of different competences and, and disciplines actually makes innovation possible. Um, I think if you can just briefly share the, the, the encounter of a material scientist from the University of California and, um, and yourself as a, 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 as a researcher in quantum optics. Um, and yeah, I think if you just can 
share this story and then maybe also highlight one aspect that is important with ISD Cube, which is also the possibility to, to provide access to, uh, to key infrastructure, which is not relevant for every startup, but for many in that um, realm, obviously, it is. Please. So, um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, Crystal and Mirror Solutions um, started out as a very typical university startup, as a two-people garage um, uh, venture. So we basically, we, we literally started out um, with uh, Garrett Cole um, in, the, in, the, in the clean room, working, uh, trying out prototypes, and um, me uh, during the night um, writing invoices, making the, <laughs> doing the bookkeeping and so on, uh, until um, through Writing programs. invoices is brilliant. It's much exactly. better than <laughs> writing invoices. It's much yeah. better than paying invoices. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, so we were in a lucky situation to from very early on already be able to write invoices <laughs> because people were interested in what we are doing. So what we are actually doing is um, the thing that has been said here last year was we are making the world's best mirrors. And this is a short version of uh, basically we provide new technology for high performance lasers. And the main idea that um, again as it uh, came completely out of the uh, out of nothing from blue sky research in quantum physics is that we have a technology that combines semiconductor um, physics with um, modern high performance laser optics. So this is a, something that hasn't been there before and allows uh, essentially applications in many, many different markets from high power lasers to telecommunication and so on. Now, um, the point was when you start with two people um, in a university setting, this goes only to a certain point um, until you have the prototype. Once you have the prototype and people become interested, then um, you cannot any longer use the university as an infrast an environment to, to, to now uh, make a product. Um, there's no funding for that, uh, there are no capacities for that, you need additional people, you need additional infrastructure. This is where we were lucky in the beginning uh, through diff similar programs that you mentioned. Um, so we had from the, from the ERC, the, they, they have this proof of concept grant on the European level, in addition with AWS and so on, to basically go to the next stage um, of then starting a company four years ago in 2013. This is when we, when we started. Um, and then over the time, once you, uh, once you grow to a critical size, you cannot feed the company anymore just with your own money. Um, so basically, if you have to pay salaries for, for a certain number of people, um, this needs to come also from somewhere else. So this is where we got then um, seed funds and so on. And um, now the most critical thing, however, was apart from um, finances, which is of course possible to, to stay alive, but to thrive us, we are a company that produce high tech. So infrastructure for production was for us always um, the cr uh, a key issue. So this uh, is the reason why now, so we founded two, uh, 2013, why by now we already have um, three sites. Um, so one in, um, well, here in Austria, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Switzerland, where we work with IBM on producing semiconductor structures, and in Santa Barbara, where we use the clean room of the um, uh, uh, UCSB in California and Santa Barbara to do manufacturing, manufacturing products. Um, so we were always driven by the need to produce. Uh, and this is also the reason why now we are located here in Kloster Neuburg, because uh, here we are provided with the necessary infrastructure um, to do process development and later on also the idea is um, now to basically do the next step, do semi-automated um, uh, manufacturing and so on. Um, so uh, apart from the, um, the necessity to have funding, um, for us as a high-tech company, it, uh, it was essential to have the infrastructure production facility. And this, I think, is what's very interesting now uh, with this tube that you're providing um, uh, also the infrastructure here at IST. Which is, I think, a really great way, um, and, and, and IST facilitates that type of development. I think one of the advantages of IST really and of the location of IST that has been, I think, been the ground for much discussion 10 years ago, um, is that we have place to expand. I think this is really an important uh, factor in the longer term development of these initiatives because we start now with a 
you know, a handful of companies and that is small, but obviously what we, the reason why we do it is because we think that these companies will grow, right? And the number of companies will grow. Um, and I think having the capacity to just build an additional building, um, also fitted with the requirements that you have is, is something that we have now and we hope to retain in the future. Um, um, I, I think um, you're a little bit further ahead and, and you have been doing this for a while, so yes, no, certainly not, um, not new at this. Um, and I'm sure you have seen other situations and other institutions that are, that are trying to support uh, initiatives like and ventures like, like your own ones. Um, I mean, I'm interested in your reaction, obviously, and maybe there is also a piece of advice that you can give us, right? What are the things that we should actually be doing? What should we be offering? What is the need that companies in the early stages like yours, um, the stage that you have been in, um, need? Yeah, also thanks for having me, Marcus. So um, maybe before answering to the question, and I have, um, I think, some, something very positive, but also something where for me there's a bit of question mark. Before doing so, let me just briefly introduce, so Xarion Laser Acoustics is, um, I would say, a young company in the transition from a startup company to maybe a young high-tech company. So we are five years old now, and we are, um, you know, say, we, we are, first four years were, were a lot of development work and now since one year we are focusing very much on sales and on business development so let's, let's call it the transition phase between startup and, and young high-tech company but what we do is an optical sensor which is um, a laser-based ultrasound sensor and it can be used for three purposes so one is uh, medical imaging um, the second in, is uh, industrial process control so we actually listen to industrial manufacturing machines and can tell uh, whether the process is running smoothly or not and uh, the third one is non-destructive testing so it's like uh, if you imagine a baby ultrasound, but instead of imaging the baby, we do image, um, you know, for instance, the wing of an aircraft or the carbon fiber composites of a car, stuff like that. So uh, coming back to the question, I think it's excellent to have uh, a location where you can provide infrastructure, as mentioned Markus, that's one thing, so that could be office space, uh, simple as that, but also machines, high-tech machines, and obviously also the experience from all the experts. But then there is a second part that's also the economic advice, because we as scientific, uh, uh, science tech guys, we sometimes, I can speak for myself, believe that you know, that's, that's everything uh, needed to uh, found a company. But then I was uh, very lucky to uh, team up with a former McKinsey, so that was actually my, my uh, founding partner. And he kind of showed me the importance, uh, you know, to come up with a proper business plan and to do it, uh, you know, in an in a economics properly designed way right from the start. And, and that's, I think, a very important uh, point which can be provided from your side. So I think those are two, for me, uh, as I understand, two very important cornerstones. So the, the question mark, or the more like, for me, a bit doubtful part is, um, at the time when this I was... This is now the unrehearsed part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's bring up some tension. <laughs> so, um, you know, at the time when I was kind of um, spinning out, that's why I did my PhD at the University of Technology in Vienna, and at the time, I remember, I had quite some, you know, some rough discussions with the transfer department, because obviously, each side wants to have best for his part. So uh, I, I, I think this, some, this interlink you, you have here, um, you know, could be maybe problematic to some extent, um, maybe on this behalf. So you kind of offer the space, but how can you then discuss freely on uh, how IP is handled or also on how the conditions for funding is handled? Because the time we were looking for funds, we looked at different options. Uh, we did uh, seed financing and now we did series A financing in uh, last December. So we are comparing different options. And I think um, if, if you are uh, like kept from a very early stage in an incubator, you maybe might lose some of that freedom. So I was wondering, you know, how, maybe, you know, to play the question back to you, what's your opinion on this? How, how would you 
deal with that? The different aspects to this. The one, um, this combination of the of what Tom in his speech mentioned as different prongs um, of a coherent strategy um, is one where we have IST's own tech transfer activities. So we are looking at the IP that is developed here um, and obviously will seek the best economic deal in the interest of IST, right? And then there is IST Cube, which is an investor um, and supporter um, of these initiatives. Um, and obviously in, in negotiations would be sitting at opposites, uh, opposite sides of, of the table. I think what's really important and, and, and our experience in dealing with this so far is two things. The first is it doesn't typically matter much and I think many of the universities and many of the founders still have to learn this on what exactly the percentage in a pie the size of which is unclear really is, right? I think the really critical part at the time is to make sure there is pie and eventually can get eaten, right? That's the classic argument I think where it's important um, that everybody uh, really tries to move in the, in the best way to make something possible. And, m and many initiatives I think that are, that are having difficult initially have difficulties because the processes at tech transfer office at other universities are not that well defined or well structured yet and there is a lot of complications. I think this is something that we can um, I think help and, 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 and advise possibly. Um, the, the second question is, I think, for these initiatives where there's clearly um, the risk of a conflict, we have made clear and, 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 and will make uh, clear that there are clear responsibilities to, to deal with these different sides. Um, one way that we hope, and I'm not sure we'll actually get to in the end, but um, what, we, what we try to do is, um, there is this notion of the external equity investor is, is the external stick that makes sure that milestones are met, that people are actually performing, that they are working late and everything. And yes, I think that role is necessary in the development of a startup. Um, but I think it is possible to combine that role with the role of a mentor who is actually really helping, really sincerely helping uh, to grow that, uh, that initiative. So I think uh, maybe practically it's not so different what we do, but from a mindset, we're really trying to co combine these two roles um, and help from the inception. Was that an answer? Just, just one brief comment. I totally agree that first, the first question is you need to have a pie in order to discuss shares. But uh, I remember from the very early stage, we didn't have a website, and uh, I don't know if you ever created a website, but I was kind of shocked how expensive it is. So unless you do a, a, a template, then the web design is pretty costly. So, and we didn't have enough money, so we wanted to offer uh, to the web designer a company share. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were thinking of like 5% like to 10%. And, <laughs> and, and um, because we thought, well, I wasn't you know, talking about that. Without, without a website, we cannot, we cannot have uh, anything. So there's no pie with our website. But like from a later uh, perspective, uh, fortunately, we did not uh, give him 10% of the company. <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually a great link to, I think, to the last slide um, we, we had here, which is we are launching our website uh, today. <laughs> we did it on our own. It was not expensive. We didn't give away shares for that. But um, so without further ado, uh, let me actually ask Stefan back on the stage. Um, yeah, and I'd like to ask you to stay, actually. Maybe we have two moderators then, because I think it's very fruitful if you stayed here. Uh, and if we enrich uh, the, the panel uh, with three additional guests, I'd like to welcome Irene Reich-Wechselbraum, Reich, Reich uh, General Manager of Thermo Fischer Scientific in Austria. I think that's your place, Irene. <laughs> I would like to welcome Alexander von Gabor. Uh, please join me. Um, Alexander von Gabor has many different roles, but now I think the best way to describe is Chairman of the Supervisory Board of EIT, Knowledge and Innovation Community. Is that right? Or did yes. I make... Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. And <laughs> I would like to introduce to you and like to, uh, ask um, Thomas, uh, Thomas Timfer to join me. He's Managing Director of BNC Innovation Investments Limited. Thomas.
Now we talked about ISD Cube, we discussed a little bit about ISD Cube, uh, and uh, I tried to now to widen the scope of the panel in one or the other way, and if I fail, then Marcus will step in and help me. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Irene, you have heard about ISD Cube, you've heard about the different questions that the young entrepreneurs brought up. Uh, you have a background in uh, life sciences, have been in business for a very, uh, very long time. Uh, you've seen a lot of different um, surroundings internationally. Um, ISD Cube, as, you, as was presented to you, is it something that you see as an opportunity that, that science uh, offers kind of um, um, enhancers that may become a competitor of yours, or do you see it as an enrichment, as an additional added value to uh, the innovative power of uh, ecosystems? First of all, thanks for the invitation, thanks to the organizers. Uh, um, it's a pleasure to be here and an honor. And actually, congratulations to this uh, cube. And to answer your question, I see that as an additional opportunity. So I would like to echo what this Marcus has said, that during product development and technology development, you go through the various stages. And to me, there's certainly one stage where such a cube, such an incubator, and a different funding structure than the one that we currently know is really the right thing to do. And this, to me, does not actually take away any opportunities for industry. Uh, and it actually helps industry because, from my experience, we are offered products or technologies at a very, very early stage of development. And so, from my perspective, this may help to bridge this gap between basic research and the moment when, when the technology, when the product is actually mature enough for the industrial use. And as was pointed out, industry partners bring in additional value that cannot be offered by an incubator, like you mentioned, the the, uh, the manufacturing plants that are needed, uh, and on top, a, a commercial channel that can be opened through, through industrial partner, which is, at the end of the day, <laughs> real, real important for any success of a product. So I would say this is different players, this is, there's, there's different stages, uh, for industrial partners uh, and, and such an incubator, so therefore I, I think it's a, it's a, a great uh, opportunity for all of us to have such an, such an institution. Okay. It's an enrichment. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Um, that leads me to Thomas. Um, you're um, <coughs> running BNC Innovation Investments. Uh, this is a very distinct endeavor. Um, maybe you can shortly describe what you do. Um, your academic background actually is business administration, and my question being a, from the same cohort, so to speak, uh, how difficult is it for you to actually talk to science uh, and to scientists uh, in your business environment? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, especially thank you to ISD. And let me first mention, um, I think this uh, package of, of IP Park and Cube um, is, a, is a great combination and really uh, makes a lot of sense also from, from our perspective. Now, um, some words on, on BNC innovation investments activities. Um, that's not the core business of BNC Group uh, based in Vienna. BNC Group is well known for its uh, industry shareholdings in Lenzing, Semperit and, and AMAC. Um, it's a long positioned investor and um, two years ago we started to discover the, the field of technology which is a challenge for somebody with a business administration background. Now what are the reasons why, why, why we decided to, to invest in, in tech startups and B2B oriented young companies? Uh, we started from scratch and thought what, what value can we bring to the scene? Um, so there's a, obviously there's a lot of cash around uh, in, a, in a zero interest uh, environment. Um, so we said, 
what we have is a great network to the industry um, and, and some tradition in Austria and that's something young founders need. Um, so we try to, to connect them to the industry to help them on the, on the side of sales. Um, I'm going to give you one example. We are invested in a company based in Munich um, and actually I traveled um, Silicon Valley and the, and the West Coast at the beginning of the year together with this company and we organized several uh, sales meetings each day um, to support this company um, with relevant uh, contacts. So this is basically our outline. We are, um, we are focused on B2B technology. Our portfolio currently consists of a software company um, and the named um, hardware software technology company based in Munich. And there's one more thing I would like to stress. Um, we have a very long-term hor horizon, so um, our aim is, I always call it, to, together with the founders, build the Mittelständler Plus. And the Plus uh, is uh, like uh, everybody should make his own fantasy about the Plus, wherever it leads. Um, so far, we are uh, pretty on track. And um, we admire founders. Um, I'm privileged to know all the three who are here tonight. Um, and it's even with a business administration background fascinating to be in constant contact to technology guys. Like the three Marcuses. <laughs> well, one is, one is Balthasar. And Balthasar. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Alexander von Gamper, you, um, in the beginning you made a remarkable career in science, in academia. Uh, then you uh, switched to business, became an entrepreneur. Um, now you offer expertise to both spheres, so to speak. You also uh, joined us in the afternoon to give a lecture. Um, what were the, the decisive moments in your career and what would be advice you would like to bring forward to the young entrepreneurs and to the auditorium? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me and I'd like to congratulate the ISTA for having done a wonderful job in addressing also the topic of um, innovation. I mean, if you all agree, uh, we have to go away from the Humboldt University bringing teaching and research together. This is done at the best class here uh, in this uh, campus, but I guess we also have real to realize we have to move it um, in the interface towards the customers, okay? And we all agree the entrepreneur is in the center. And the question you ask me now is what kind of advice I could give? Well, the advice is really, and I put it like this, I was a scientist uh, and I was uh, 48 in age when I left my chair to start Intercell today, Valneva. And the most amazing thing is I learned a lot by doing a lot of mistakes. Uh, and I think this is maybe the most exciting part, but also doing a number of things very well. And the point I like to, uh, so to say, transmit uh, to young entrepreneurs is have respect for other expertise. I mean, somebody who has an MBA, he can, if you are explaining him properly to him, quickly fetch a point, what is, so to say, the innovation you're slowly, driving at. Slowly, 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 slowly. <laughs> but also see here is something to you to offer which maybe you don't have. And I think you mentioned nicely talking to people who have either managerial background or they have ever developed a product or they have ever done business development or they are good in financing or what we also call talking about Q, it's intelligent capital. These fellows that only invest the seed money or your A or B round, they also have a fantastic network. Okay? But I like to come back to what you have stated uh, and I think uh, we know each other for quite some time. I also think we should see that smart industries have started to think about new ways to interact with academic campuses and uh, with venture capital. And I think, uh, I would say, in my field, uh, Johnson Johnson really has an entire new concept, and I presented for the one who were not here in the afternoon, that we have made for the Karolinska deal with Johnson Johnson, where Johnson Johnson is participating in lecturing. They're, they're, not, they're not picking a cherry, they just say, we like to create a dialogue, and once a dialogue is created, it may become interesting, but they help even students who are doing things which are not interesting to Johnson Johnson and maybe giving them a contact to a good uh, venture capitalist. So I would say we should open this eco field, and I guess what I think most important, uh, uh, maybe my concluding remark is, um, I hope that all these fantastic initiatives of Easter now towards innovation 
are promiscuity. And I see this joy that one is coming from my old alma mater, the University of Vienna, another one from the Technical University, and we are running together Enits, which is a founder's service which has done a good job to founding and setting up companies out of the Technical University and out of the University of Vienna. So in conclusion, also in investment, I guess you are not only investing in Easter projects. And I think and we have to go even beyond Austria, or just, just a little. I mean, you have to invest in London, in Munich, in wherever it happens, in Stockholm. And I guess let's a little bit also get out of that silo mentality, I think. And let's learn from the mistakes of the past. So some of the great industry, like Siemens and Novartis, they were setting up exclusive venture funds, only investing in Novartis projects, spin -offs, or only investing in Siemens projects. But it's not the way to go. Benchmark by once in a while, also make a seat, let's say, out of another university somewhere where you feel this is strengthening also your expertise to invest. So, back and to summarize, I strongly suggest have respect to other faculties and uh, learn that even if you are a top notch scientist and you are excited to become an entrepreneur, there's so much tacit knowledge out there. And I think take it up and use it. Wherever you, whether you're in an airport or you're sitting next to somebody flying to New York and you see the businessman, maybe not doing a scientific business, but maybe you can learn something for your business by talking to this person. All right. okay. You can keep the microphone because I'm on. Uh, so, sorry, yeah, Rupert, yeah. if you're not saying something, I need to say something. <laughs> this is exactly what we try to do. So thank you very much for, for the way you put it as well. Um, obviously, one way for us was to think about you know, what is our realm, where are the boundaries, and the boundaries are not the city border of Vienna and Low Austria? Clearly not. Right? It's not the boundaries between other local regions in Austria, and it's also not the Austrian boundary. Right? right? I think it is absolutely the case that we need to be active on a on, and this seems far-fetched on a global scale, and we will not be this immediately, clearly, right? But I think the way that this venture can develop is that we will do the first investments, it will carry with it a certain profile for which we stand for and for which we are good, and I think that should give us access to really the best transactions everywhere. That's really the intention. Okay, there is, there is, there is consensus. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I would like to uh, add on this. So. We're now thinking about investing outside of Austria, um, but I think one important part in Austria is that uh, we can discuss this open for Europeans as well, that we have uh, some kind of gap in terms of investments within Austria um, that needs to be, needs to be filled, um, especially for high-tech university startups. So we have like these uh, business angels that can put in money, um, depending on, there are a few ones that can support very long-term investments in Austria, but only a few ones and they are not so much in this really, really deep tech, high tech, B2B domain. Um, then you have uh, seed funds like Speed Invest, uh, Startup 300s, who will mo focus on more like, not so long-term investments, but really, really shorter. And then the next stage basically is you have VC funds, uh, who usually invest in a much larger scale. So like for a seed round for us, for example, they. Uh, we presented to them and they basically said it's very interesting, keep us updated and maybe in one and a half years when you're at the next stage we'll be interested to invest. So we're now sitting here uh, needing money for the next one and a half years and we probably need money after that as well and we need people who have the network, who can support us, who can help us to get into the market with the network and be there in for the, for the very long term. And here I think, and this is where from my knowledge there is not so much going on in Austria, and I think this is a gap that needs to be filled. And I think PC Holding is in this area targeting this domain as well for long-term high-tech investments. And this might also be an option for, for ICE to jump in there as well, but I'm happy to hear your opinion about that. Okay. Thomas. Just um, let me quickly add two points I would like to stress. Uh, first of all, what you said, uh, founders who who seek smart industries and provide them with real value added. So when, when they do sales and they approach their, their potential clients, the clients are really keen to, to buy the product because there is a, there's a real value added. This is what we find extremely uh, interesting and, and uh, what, what's in the center of our investment focus. So combining, let's say, the, um, the old world with the new world, new, uh, things that come up that are innovative, they are a threat, they are an opportunity. Um, I want to make one critical remark. What we always regret is that um, I sometimes have the feeling um, 
people think of the startup scene in Austria more in the in the sense of TV shows, um, <laughs> non-research startups, and um, I always regret that people like you who who do um, deep tech research and and basic research and really bring something to the table. So this is the critical part of the statement that they aren't in the um, like in the heart of of, of the uh, media focus. And I think I actually think this is a real pity, um, and we we try to um, to focus on on such founders that um, exactly fulfill uh, this mission of servicing old economy uh, with innovative products. Okay, Alexander, uh, we also uh, Rupesh, please. I, I just wanted to quickly touch on on Marcus's point, and this is exactly the area we're trying to fill, right? And the reason why there's a gap is because it's hard. Right? I mean, you're dealing with, most people don't have, uh, most investors don't have the ability to sort of understand academic spin out or very early sort of IP development and then sort of the product market side of things, right? And I think we're very, very lucky in the team that we've been able to assemble here at ICTQ that we have certain people on the team who are excellent on the IPR side, for example, really, really good. And then you have the ruthless sort of venture capitalist type like me on the team as well, so who can kind of help those teams go through to the next, next phase of the financing. Just a quick comment. Okay, Alexander. I think uh, your concern, I would share, this is not an Austrian problem, it's a European problem, that we don't have uh, enough public money for prototyping. I mean, and this is more de-risking for the seed investor, and I think this is a great dilemma, and I think we can only look into, hopefully not being ruined by its current president, the United States. Um, they have, um, a lot of tools and instruments, public tools and instruments, that help take my industry to finance a proof of concept phase one or an early phase two trial. And I think uh, it's NIH itself, this famous uh, basic research funding institute, that also goes in their panel through proposals from biotech companies are saying, I have a scientifically new idea and I'm six individuals or 12 individuals, I like to make a proof of concept in a phase one trial where you have to look for safety but you could maybe already read something out. And the dilemma is that our funding institution in Germany, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, the FWF here, so they feel they would become too promiscuity, but I see it the other way around. If they would also have money for paying a proof of concepts after peer reviewing, they do two favors. Number one, they learn more about translation. Number two, a young company which gets a stamp of approval of the FAF, that this is a smartly, uh, so say, tailored phase one trial, uh, gets maybe a closer second look of an investor. So that community we still have to create that we get non-dilutive funding in the Death Valley, as we sometimes say, when just people like you are coming in. And I think it's funny that nobody really feels responsible. I mean, the ABS does it to some degree, but it's not really like uh, uh, there are a number of American institutions in life science, biotech, uh, I think including the US Army helped a lot of interesting uh, new treatments and drugs uh, to be evolved by helping prototyping to finance. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think uh, we see too many companies that are being companies too early in their life cycle, right? right. They should be still grant funded, they should maybe right. even be still part of the university, um, and they shouldn't be out there raising equity. Even, just a quick qu a comment, even, to be f even though to be fair, I think the, the AWS seed financing and the mark start from FFG is heading into this direction, and nevertheless, I think it's also important to mention that it's, it's great that there is something like that. I mean, yeah. yeah I, I would. 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, okay. I believe that very much. Yeah. But to jump in here yeah. just quickly, Thanks. for example, for us, um, in terms of public grants, uh, so we were quite lucky. We got a Horizon 2020 grant as well as a uh, Wirtschaftsagentur Wien grant, and we're now also looking into seed and uh, uh, FFG basis program. And I think we're looking for investment of 500,000 euros and. We can leverage that with public grants to two millions, basically, um, if we're lucky to get them. But um, in general, I think there is, but that's basically, I think, not the thing that you were targeting with your comments. I think you're targeting a little bit different stages of startups and different kind of technology. But I just wanted to, to mention that there is a really good chance to leverage uh, private investments in Austria in general. And 
this is something I want to bring in quickly for all the scientists here. Um, so what I, what I learned in, in writing grants and getting uh, money from public institutions is that uh, what you get teached in writing papers, um, this helps you a lot when you decide to go to an entrepreneur path. It helps you to be specific, to ask the right questions to yourself, to be critical. And usually in the end, you have, you have a business plan, you have a proposal that is very robust and gets through these, uh, yeah, these, uh, uh, these raises, basically, uh, when you decide whether to give it a grant or not. This helps you very much in favor of actually getting the grants. I think that's something, if you decide to go into entrepreneurship, this will help you a lot to set this mind, use this mindset in the entrepreneurship as well. Marcus, if, yeah. I, if I can jump in here quickly, the, you mentioned the difference between the US and the European system. In, in Europe, um, of course, as you said, but there's an AWS and so on in Austria, this is uh, very nicely set up. Um, however, and in Europe, we have the one exception, the proof of concept grant of the European Research Council, which is accessible, unfortunately, only a small number of people, but this is a completely 100% um, uh, um, uh, um, funding into the, into the company. In, um, if you have grants here, um, these are grants that um, require an additional up to 40% investment um, for the company, so it sometimes can not be uh, lucrative to, um, to, to go for a grant. In the US, um, you get 100% funding um, in um, in, in grant schemes where there's co-development between universities and, um, and, and, and startups, um, high-tech companies and so on for not only prototyping, but then once the prototype is phase A, but then there's a follow-up with significantly more money um, than to full product um, and even, even market entry. So this is something where I guess one can, uh, one can really learn. I, I tried several times within EU panels um, to introduce some of the structures, um, to suggest to introduce some of the structures that, um, that are present in this type of MURI fundings in the US just without success. The, the, the structures in the EU, is, they, they, we operate on different timescales. Yeah, so pr programs have to be predefined five years in advance, and this is completely uh, against um, how high tech, deep tech, and so on just operates. And um, so quickly switching topic, I just want to um, uh, comment on what you said, so be, be open to take advice. I could not agree more. And um, I mean, since we know each other very well, so I, I know that is also the case for you. We were very happy, f uh, very lucky from the start um, to always um, uh, had, uh, having had access to good advisors from different fields, people um, who we had access to who came from um, a large, either large companies um, who then also became part of our advisory board. So if we have example, um, the, 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 um, uh, the, the chair of the board of the Herbinger um, group, we have um, ZKW, uh, we have the former vice president of engineering Google in our board, where he really um, we have access to, um, to know-how that we, at least well, I as a, a, let's say, naive scientist would never actually have. So this is, I, I just I couldn't agree more. And we have to be extremely, so we, we were lucky and it helped a lot to have such people and to, um, also, um, contacts have been made through our investors also. Yeah, so this is something where I guess the, the East Cube um, could also help significantly. Okay, Rupesh, uh, one question for you. Maybe just a little bit of a wrap up because I also want to uh, give the audience uh, the opportunity to ask one of the other questions to the panelists. Uh, Rupesh, what are the most important things that need uh, to happen or need to change in Austria from your perspective, uh, still with an outside view, I would say, uh, with a lot of background? Um, what is your observation in that context? Given how much time I've spent at the notary in the last couple of weeks, <laughs> I, I think a lot has to happen in terms of sort of legal, uh, legal jurisdiction, legal... It, it is incredible how difficult and slow it is to actually start a company in this country. Um, I think we could have probably incorporated a UK Limited in the two hours that we've been up on this panel. Um, uh, whereas here, it's, it's a very slow and laborious process. And I think that, but that sort of then translates into what is it really all about? It's all about that creative destructive force that's very, very important when you're trying to create a technology ecosystem. And sort of that sort of mentality needs to, needs to, to, to trickle all the way through. And I'm not just talking about the legal structure, but just entirely the sort of, 
this is part of it. We create stuff, we destroy stuff, we fail, we, and, and that culture and that sort of needs to be embedded in every aspect. And I think that would probably be, if I'm only allowed one, that's probably the one I would go with. You are allowed much more. <laughs> uh, um, maybe we get to the point in time where I'd like to say thank you to all our panelists um, for uh, sharing their, your ideas with us and being available for, for the answers. Uh, since it's getting quite hot here, I would suggest that we move to the seats and Georg, it would be then actually you uh, for the final words. By the way, I would like to say also thank you, maybe Georg, you double it. I would like to say this. thank you, Lisa and the whole team for organizing, for setting up <laughs> the evening. Hello. Okay. Um, well, first of all, a big thank you to all the panelists for for coming coming here and and sharing their advice with us. Uh, we participated in a very fruitful and rewarding discussion, I think, bringing together the different perspectives of what it takes to create and translate scientific results, but also how to connect these two stages. So our main questions today were, and I, that's not only this evening, but also in the afternoon how to make the transition from academia to industry, not only in terms of scientific results, but also in terms of involved people. How can, the second one is how can we facilitate the exchange from the academic side as well as from the industrial side? And third, how can ICT Austria contribute to the Austrian innovation landscape? And I think the panel members have given uh, quite a number of very interesting answers to that. Uh, how IST Cube, for example, can fit into this landscape by being also one of the first, and maybe even the first in Austria, to combine public, um, a public research institute together with private investment. Um, we've also heard that what is very important for funders especially is to get funding, for founders to get funding, uh, to have infrastructure, access to infrastructure that we here at Austria, Austria uh, can provide. And what was also very interesting is to see that uh, apart from actual funding and, and the infrastructure, what is often more important even is to get economic or business advice uh, as a first thing, especially for people who come from an academic or more technical setting. Um, we also heard that industry itself doesn't perceive something like IST Cube or new um, companies as competitors, but rather as uh, an, an enrichment of the, of the eco ecosystem. And it's also important to have a long-term horizon. And I especially liked the, the, the word uh, you used, promiscuity, to look beyond the silos that have developed and not only stay in one's own field, look beyond that, and also not only look on a local scale, but rather on a global one. So, a great idea often happens in the blink of an eye. Well, then it takes a while to find out whether it's a good idea, actually. And this is only the beginning of a long process that requires a lot of hard work. Maybe even blood, sweat and tears, though hopefully not too many. But definitely dedication and perseverance. And still it all may lead nowhere. So then you have to start all over again and maybe again and again. What I'm trying to emphasize here is that it may take a lot of time to get from an idea to an application, a product, a sustainable business project takes endurance and patience, commitment and dedication, and above all, it will take time. We are glad to have partners in our endeavors who are absolutely committed to supporting us and the science performed on campus, as well as its translational applications. And here, I want to give a big thank you to the Federal Ministry of Science, uh, Research and Economy for the excellent cooperation as well as to the Federation of Aus Austrian uh, Industries for their continuous support already in the founding stages of ISD Austria and now in many of our technology transfer activities. Um, the necessary preconditions are already there or planned and will be constantly developed further. World-class research and research infrastructure, creative and innovative people, 
you, many of you, who are supported in translating the idea into business and industry partners who are all are ready to take risks and believe in the potential of IST Austria. I am very positive and optimistic that we have everything it takes to be successful. We also need to be lucky, there's no doubt about that, but what mainly lies ahead of us is a lot of work. So let's do it. To do all this work, it's of course necessary to eat something as well. So I want to thank you very much and the buffet is open, please.